Who junked a 58 Edsel? Out at the junkyard today, taking a quick look down the rows of the uh, old cars. They put these right up front and center. First one we've got is this 1980 Ford LTD. Kind of an oddball. It's got a white vinyl top, cloth interior. Show the sticker. Anybody that's into that sort of thing. Took a hit to the front. A couple of these 80s Chevy pickups. These things are starting to get a little more hard to come by. Bit of an oddball here, Ford Courier. Not even really a rusty one. This is a Ford F-150. This particular one, 1981 model. See it's got the big bolt circle. This actually had a F-100 badge. I know there was a bit of a switcheroo with some of those. Your F-100s were supposed to have a smaller four and a half inch bolt circle and a little more light duty brake parts. This one was a endline six cylinder. You see on the sticker there, 4.9 liter, whatever that equates to. And it was a three on the tree, manual transmission. Pretty bare bones truck, AC delete. You see the vinyl interior. Right here's probably the rustiest 77 Chevy pickup in the world. You can see that cab was so bad. When they put that thing up on the stands, the weight of the truck literally collapsed the cab in on itself. This crazy, crazy amount of rust in that truck. This thing is just absolutely beat to death. No idea how many miles it's got on it, but it's a lot. There's another one of these bullnose Fords. This color was pretty popular after the Bigfoot monster trucks. A lot of guys ordered that. 351M with a two barrel. Model year is obscured on the sticker. That one's got AC. That was a pretty neat looking truck back in its day. And this is a old Plymouth Valiant. This car is very, very similar to the one that my granddad had. This one's more of a orangey butterscotch shade. My granddad's was brown. Not sure exactly what the catalog name was for that color. This one's got the cloth interior with the paisley. My granddad's was vinyl. I can remember riding in that car in the summer. That vinyl would sure scorch your legs. Wearing shorts. 75. My granddad's was a 76. And... 76 was a transitional year. They did bring out the Aspen and the Volari, and so there's not a whole lot of these Valiants and Darts that were still model year 76, but there were a few. And down this row, this is a 68 Ford two-door hardtop. This is a car that somebody started restoring the bumpers on these are just meant brand new condition and you take a look you can see the little hammer marks on the back side these are actually replate bumpers front and rear 
It's a disc brake car, which is kind of uncommon. That would be a good changeover option for somebody to have. Black interior. You see beautiful, beautiful chrome on that back bumper. Next to it, this is a 62 Ford Fairlane. This was the first year of intermediate Fairlane body back from 58, 59 to 61. Those were full size. And then 62 Chrysler did their downsize, their Plymouth Savoy and Belvedere and Fury and then Dodge, you had those midsize bodies that they had downsized. And so Ford answered by moving the Fairlane to also a middle series car above the Falcon, below the Galaxy. This car has dents in this lower trim. But that lower trim piece, if you ever find one of those good, that's like $800 piece. He's actually had factory 13 inch wheels, 62 and 63. Nice little surprise, this actually has your factory Fomoco seat belts. See the little oval on the inside there. Those are a good accessory for guys restoring any of these early 60s Fords of any kind, Thunderbird, whatever. Probably a 221 V8. Actually does have power steering. That 221 was the very smallest displacement of the Ford Windsor motors. And this is the first vehicle it was used in was the 62 Fairlanes. Then we've got a 73 Ford Maverick. It's a drum brake car. If a guy ever finds discs or power brake, those are good options to grab off one of these. Should make sure this is a s automatic. Yeah, it is. If a guy had a set of clutch pedals in one of those, that'd be good option to grab as well and here's a 72 Plymouth Valiant this is gold car the slant 6 identical to another one that we grew up in as kids Wish that was a Dodge, that would be a good steering wheel for one of the Bluesmobiles. Porsche Cayenne, 1958 Edsel Villager Station Wagon. Who junked a 58 Edsel? see the red line tires also make note that that's a four and a half inch bolt circle these were built on the Ford chassis your Corsair and Citation sedans those are built on the Mercury chassis so they would have the bigger five inch bolt circle there were 358 Edsel models available. You had your two door roundup, and then you had your base trim Villager, and then the top trim was the Bermuda, identified by wood paneling on the sides. You can see this car's pretty rusty. It probably sat in somebody's backyard and was a stalled project. Got towed as an impound. 
and was bought by the yard here to be set down and parted out. Nine inch rear end in these does have the bigger bearings. That used to be a pretty desirable piece to sell, but now there's a lot more exchange and rebuilding going on of these nine inches. They have jigs that they'll build you custom tubes and widths. And so that housing may be desirable to somebody, but it's not the big screamer like it used to be for being a desirable part to go pull. These taillights, the customizer guys kind of like these because you can put them in a ranchero. Tailgate's actually in really good shape. Don't see any rust or dents in it. Looks really solid on the bottom. I just don't know, honestly, how a person would get that out. Got these big Phillips screw heads. It would be a real pain to get out without power tools, which they don't like in the yards here. Rear glass is good, upper gate's nice. Another red line tire in there. This one, obviously, just a six passenger. And somebody's retrofitted it with, looks like Corvair bucket seats. See the smaller body buckets, the trim doesn't go all the way over the top, it just stops right there. An option that these Edsels had was the town and country radio, but this one's just got the regular, regular uh, buttons on it, not the town and country. Somebody has swapped this car over to manual transmission. You see that weird truck shifter there and if you look on the steering wheel they've actually put this tape over you see where the buttons used to be for that teletouch teletouch was similar to Chrysler's push-button automatic except the Chrysler would have been mechanical actuated by a cable and the Ford was electric which was done by the buttons and unfortunately they were problematic even from very brand new as was noted by one of the 58 Edsels that was driven to a press event to promote the launch of the car actually had to be towed because the teletouch gave trouble and that was kind of a foreboding of some of the bad things to come for Hedzel marketing and longevity as a brand in general. So how that all works, the center part you can see is fixed and the wheel, that whole collar spins around it. And in front of the swapped manual transmission is this 223 N line six cylinder. Base engine available in these cars. Sad end to a rare car. The villager name was used for all three years 58, 59, and 60. Of course, 60 was your abbreviated half model year because Ford decided to cut their losses and Edsel as a brand was dead in 60. The Villager name would pop up later on some Mercury station wagons and then again in the 90s on their minivans. I'm gonna give everybody a quick look here at the out of plate and see what this car was. This 
So this is the row of oldies available for parts. February 1st, 2023, here in Wichita, Kansas. I'll put down in the description the junkyard where we took our little visit to today. One more oldie. I believe it's a 65 Chevy C20. This one's given up quite a few good parts. It's a V8 model. Looks like that thing still probably had a chance of running. Had the deluxe side moldings. Three quarter ton truck. This thing's pretty rusty. Time they get that much rust in them. Truck really has to have some sort of a sentimental value to justify putting work into full restoration. I mean, not everything has to be restored to be something. Be a good patina truck, but that wasn't the case for it. It came here to be parted out, organ donor. So I did pull the taillights out of that Edsel wagon. They were just too neat to leave behind. And anybody that's got one of those wagons that they're working on, if they're missing or broken, or even if somebody's customizing a Ford Ranchero, I feel like these would be pretty good eBay parts. So I got them listed. These are almost a little reminiscent of Googie architecture which is a mid-century style. It's actually named after a building that was built with that style of architecture called Googie's Coffee Shop. And they had, like, boomerangs. Obviously, you see the shape of these taillights. And, like, cantilevered roofs, parabolas. You can see, like, that waffle pattern is part of it. Just those design elements... Sort of like the way in the early 50s, airplanes influenced automotive styling with the tail fins, architecture, and late 50s cars sort of had some complementary elements that ran together. Interesting trivia of mid-century vehicles, that sort of thing. The other pieces that I did get were these Fomoco seat belts. Pretty cheap buy-in at the U-Pull Yard. They kind of have a structure that's priced by the part. So for the buy-in that I got these picked up for, I think there's probably pretty decent markup. I did look up the seats, and I believe those are also a match for the early Nova SS, which would be like 63 to 65, and possibly a Chevelle. A lot of those corporate GM bucket seats were kind of borrowed out of the same parts of it. A lot of those GM bucket seats were borrowed out of the same corporate parts bin. And so push that tip to a friend of mine and I think he's going to go grab them. So should be able to get a hold of them out of the car probably by the time you see this video posted. Must have been somebody's old family hot rod or surf wagon back in the 60s. Sad to see it end like this, but all roads lead to the junkyard.